All right, guys, we got this 2021 L5P Duramax in the shop, and I'm going to show you how to do a full delete on it step by step. First things first, though, if this is illegal where you live, I strongly recommend you don't do it. And if you're unsure, make sure you look up your local laws and just stay in accordance with them. And in most cases, this will also void your warranty. So keep that in mind if you still have factory warranty. In this video, we are going to swap the factory exhaust with an aftermarket five inch straight pipe. We're also going to be removing the EGR and replacing the downpipe on this truck. So this is a full delete. So this is the kit we're going to be using. This kit is from the diesel dudes and I will put a link down in the description. Comes with everything you need to fully delete your truck. But this video, we're just going to focus on the downpipe, the EGR kit and the exhaust. There's also some other stuff. This is some heat wrap for this downpipe. These are CAN bus plugs. You got to have those plugged in or the truck won't run properly. But yeah, this is from the diesel dudes. It's an awesome kit and I'll put a link in the description if you want to check it out. The downpipe is actually an add-on. It doesn't come with the normal EGR delete kit, but I strongly recommend you get the downpipe because then you get rid of all the filters and it sounds way better without having that filter in the downpipe. Now, before you remove any parts from the truck, you have to first tune the truck. Now, to keep the videos a little bit short in length, I actually made a completely separate video for tuning and I'll put a little thing up here and in the description. So go watch that video and make sure you have the truck properly tuned before you start removing any parts. Now this truck is a 2021, like I said, so this should be the same for 2020 to 2023 L5P Duramax and very, very similar for the 2017 to 2019. I think the only difference on the 2017 to 19 is the way you run the coolant lines. But if you get the kit from the diesel dudes, they send you instructions and you should be able to figure it out easily if you watch this video. With the diesel dudes, there's the option of just doing delete pipes, which is like the front half of the exhaust, or you can do the full five inch exhaust, which is what we're doing. So technically speaking, you don't actually have to do the downpipe and the EGR delete. You can just do the exhaust, but these trucks have a catalytic converter bolted to the turbo that's part of the downpipe assembly. So if you just do the exhaust, you're still going to have that one filter and you're still going to be a bit restricted. So it's up to you guys whether you want to do the full delete or not. I say do the full delete. It's just better. Full delete also sounds way better. Okay, so the truck is tuned. Remember, we have to do that first. Now, after the truck is tuned, I'm going to start by removing the factory exhaust. If you want to remove the factory exhaust without cutting it, you're going to need to put the truck up on a lift, and then you're going to have to drop some cross members because it's basically just one big piece, and that's how you can take it out. In this video, though, I'm going to be using a Sawzall, and we're going to cut it out. Okay, so starting at the back of the truck, we've got the sensor over the axle, and it kind of runs over to here on the frame. So unplug that, and then you can unbolt this and just pull the whole thing off with the exhaust. You got another sensor here, follow it up there and unplug it. You got these two hoses, just remove those hoses or cut them, whatever you want to do. And up here, you got this guy. If you can unscrew it, cool. If not, just cut it off, whatever you want to do. And then there's a couple more sensors up there that are kind of hard to get at, but we can also kind of get at them later when we move this exhaust over a bit. Now at the very front of the truck, you have your def injector up there and it actually has two coolant lines going to it. So these are going to be full of coolant. So what I would do is honestly, I would just put some vice grips on them just to kind of clamp them so they don't leak. And then I would just cut them for now. And then we got to unplug the def injector and there's a sensor with the def injector too. It's going to be a pain in the ass to do it right now. So I'm going to wait till we unbolt this section of exhaust and lower it down and then we can access it better. On the frame rail here too, there's this one if you can see. And so I would just unplug it here and then this is connected to the exhaust. I would just unbolt it. And when you remove the exhaust, this will just hang here and then this can go away. This is one of the places where we have to plug in a CAN bus plug. I'll be waiting to the very end to plug in the CAN bus plugs though, but just make sure you don't forget about CAN bus plugs. I'll put chapters in the video so you'll probably see a chapter at the end that says CAN bus plugs. Most connectors will have some kind of dumb locking tab like this. Typically you always just gotta pop them outwards. So like that, and then you can press on the connector and, and take it off. I'm not gonna go over all of them. You should be able to figure it out on your own, but just thought I'd let you know. Okay, so update, this is the rear axle and I cut the exhaust above it. So this back piece I'll remove. And then I also cut it here on this side of this canister. Now you can, you can kind of do it however you want to do it. This is just how I'm doing it. So I'm going to remove these pieces, get them out of here, and then we'll uh, move on to the front of the truck. I always spray the exhaust hangers with a lubricant, and then you can use a pry bar to pry them off. Or I have these cool pliers that are meant for it that kind of press them off. 
Okay, so we got the tailpipe out and this filter out. Like I said, I cut it over the axle there and then I just cut it at the front. But this is still in the truck. We're gonna leave that for now. This filter just gonna hang out for a second. We're gonna go work on here where it connects the downpipe. Like I said, I'm gonna put a vice grip here and a vice grip there and then I'm just gonna cut these two coolant lines. And then the def injector up there and the sensor, I'm gonna try to get it when I lower this down a little bit because I can't get my hands up in there. And how I'm gonna do that is before, before I loosen those four nuts, I'm gonna grab my sawzall and right around here, I'm going to cut this, uh, this front section of the exhaust. Once it's cut, I will unbolt this from the downpipe and I'm gonna lower this piece down and then I will try to unplug that def injector and the sensor that's way up there. And yeah, this is just going to come down. And then we'll still have this filter just chilling in place for now. Okay, so I cut it right there. And then, as you can see, I put some vice grips on these coolant lines and I cut them. Now I'm going to loosen these nuts and drop this down. I got this out. I ended up just cutting it here. And then once I had it out of the room, I went and found where it plugged into and unplugged it. Uh, this, I just kind of popped the little clip out and pried it off. And then this you need to keep. And then the nuts that you took off of here, you might need to use them again. So just keep them for now. But yeah, we got one more section of exhaust to take out and then this exhaust is out. It is not super easy. There are definitely trucks where it's easier to remove the exhaust than this one. But if you just take your time, it's not too bad. Okay, so we just have this last piece to get out. It's this kind of caster right here next to the transfer case. So for this, this sensor right here, I actually just cut it with a sawzall. It's just way easier. And then there's these two wires. So the small one and the big one. The big one goes to this right here. So I'd unplug it and then I'd unbolt it and this can go with the exhaust. And then the smaller wire, if you feel your hands up over here, you'll actually find the wire and the plug connector is up on the top of the frame rail. Okay, so I'm just gonna slide this. I took this hanger off the front. Get rid of that hanger just for now. Took this hanger off. So this whole thing is loose now. So I just kind of slid it as far forward as I could. And then right here at the back of this canister, you're gonna wanna cut it with a sawzall because this actually has to come down in between these two cross members. Once you cut it, then this piece will just come out the back. And like I said, this is gonna come down. And there's still this part here. We might have to cut that off too. It depends if it will fit down or not. I actually slid this canister forward so that I can get a blade in here and cut it. And I'm just gonna cut it right along this weld as short as I possibly can, just on the inside of the sensor. Okay, we got that piece out. As you can see here, I'm trying to get it down. It almost wants to go, but this is hitting the, the top here. So I'm gonna have to just cut a little more off of here. And then this canister should just come out right there. All right, there it is, the whole thing. So I cut it there and there, cut it there, cut it there, and cut it there. If you only got the delete pipes, you're gonna still use your factory tailpipe, so you're not gonna wanna cut it over the axle. I'm not even sure where exactly you have to cut it. It should come with some instructions that show you, or you're just gonna have to measure it yourself. So yeah, don't just chop your exhaust out all the way if you just got delete pipes. But if you're doing a full exhaust, then yeah, just get rid of her. So here's the downpipe. See, I still have these, uh, these vice grips on so that it doesn't leak any coolant out. We're gonna deal with that later towards the end. We got the exhaust is all gone. If you have any sensors that are kind of loose hanging out, like this one's not bad, but you can zip tie them all out of the way. Now I'm gonna back this off the ramp so it's a little bit lower to the ground and we're gonna start working on the EGR. We're going to remove the EGR and the downpipe and then put that all back together. And then at the very end, we will connect the new exhaust all the way from the new downpipe. And it's totally okay to start the truck like this. It's just not gonna have an exhaust, obviously. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the negative battery cables. Next, we're gonna drain the coolant and it's on the passenger side. I'll show you underneath. There is the drain plug. We're just gonna loosen it to the left. Coolant is draining. Now we're gonna remove this air intake box and this air intake piping. Remove this heat shield. Now remove this whole pipe. Push this piece in right here. And then once you have it freed, you can lift this and just get it out of the way. And then remove this black bracket off your AC compressor. 
Okay, we're gonna pop off this intercooler pipe. Just kind of push these things to the side at the same time, and then you should be able just to wiggle it off like that. Unplug it too. Now we're gonna remove the AC compressor and the alternator. So loose, grab the tensioner here with the ratchet, pull the belt off of the alternator. You can completely remove the alternator. And then the AC compressor right here, unplug the two electrical connectors, leave these lines on it or else you'll lose all your Freon and have to recharge your AC system. And then take the four bolts out. That back bolt there is a pain in the ass, but you can get it with an open-ended wrench. Once this is loose, then just grab the whole AC compressor and just fold it over here off to the side. Okay, I got the air compressor moved over there. Also to get this bolt out, it's gonna hit this fan shroud. So I'm gonna take that bolt out of the fan shroud and then use a pry bar to just kind of pry this out of the way so I can get this bolt all the way out. All right, now we're gonna remove this intake horn. So there's just two bolts there and then just leave it connected to here and just swing it out of the way. Now we're going to unplug all these electrical connectors that are that's keeping this big Y bridge in place. We're gonna go after removing this Y bridge right out of the truck. If you want to take a couple pictures to remember where some of the plugs went and you see this hard coolant line right here, we're going to disconnect it on both sides and we're going to get rid of this coolant line as well. We're going to fold the little wires out of the way and I'll work on the bigger ones. Okay, I got these all loosened, kind of tuck it around the front here. And uh, yeah, I think everything is off for the most part of this Y bridge. So now we're gonna go ahead and I believe it's eight 10 millimeter bolts and we're gonna take this whole thing out. Okay, we got it off. And I would just put some rags or something in here just to keep stuff from falling into the engine because you don't want that to happen. Okay, now back over here, undo this bolt to get this coolant line out of the way and then remove this heat shield. Now you can actually remove this pipe. Now we're going to remove these two coolant pipes. So the one further back, we're going to remove this little hose off of it, then unbolt the pipe and remove it from this hose clamp. And this guy right here, there's two bolts there. Take this hose off of it. And then there's one 13 mil bolt down there. And then we'll remove this guy. Once you got those coolant lines out, we are going to plug this hole down here. This comes in the kit. I put a little bit of Vaseline on the O-ring just so it slides in better, but you can put this guy down in there, pop it in place, and then use the bolt you took out to secure it in place. Now we're gonna remove the EGR cooler. So disconnect any coolant lines that might still be connected to it. And I think it's just five 13 millimeter bolts down there. EGR cooler is out. It's looking like we're starting to get some room in the engine bay here. Now we're gonna move this lower EGR valve. I believe it's just four 13 millimeter bolts. Now where you just removed that EGR valve, use the provided gasket and blocker plate and put that down. And I think you just use the original hardware for it. Remove this coolant hose on the right side just by pressing this white tab in and then you can pull it off. Now locate the new hose that comes with this uh, fit in here and this push connect fit in but honestly I don't like this one as much I'd rather use the OEM one so I just took the OEM one off the hose and I'm going to use it in here and I'm not going to use this one so here's what the hose will look like with both those fittings on it so to be transparent with you I'm not going to lie this hose wasn't long enough so I actually just bought a bunch of 5 8 heater hose because it's good to have at the shop and I just cut a new hose uh, to make it longer I will be letting the diesel dudes know that I ran into this problem and that's one of the reasons why they get me to make these videos so that I can give my own feedback to them. So chances are by the time you get a kit, they'll probably have resolved this issue and you won't even have to worry about it. Then this hose from the firewall there to this fitting is all connected. So for the other coolant hose, this is where the model year is very a little bit, so pay attention. So on a 2020 plus L5P like this, this coolant line here, the other one we haven't touched yet, you're gonna remove the whole entire thing. So right from the firewall, this rubber line, and then this metal line, and it goes down there and there's a, there's a clamp there you're gonna loosen off and you're gonna remove this whole hose. Now that we got that hose out of there, we're just gonna basically connect it again with a new hose. Just so it looks better, you don't have that big hose up in the middle of everywhere. And this is the hose it wants you to use here, but again, this isn't gonna be long enough for how I wanna do it. Maybe this would work on the 17 to 19 trucks, but how I'm gonna do it's gonna be different. I took this fitting off the line we removed. I put it on my 5 8 heater hose. I measured it and then I cut it. I put this brass fitting in the other end that comes with the kit. And there you go, I got it connected. And then down there, you can see my two hose clamps. If yours is pretty loose, maybe zip tie it out of the way where it's not gonna touch or rub anything. So now if you have a 2017 to 2019, I'm gonna put some instructions up on the screen for you. 
So for 2017-19 trucks, replace the hard line by connecting the smaller quick connect fitting at the point shown below. Attach the other end in the same place as the just removed line. So hopefully you can look at those pictures and they make sense to you. My truck doesn't look like that, but I hope yours does. So I believe this is the left side coolant line that goes down to there, kind of like what we just did. And then the right side goes down there, which is what we did before. There's a couple other little tiny things different with the 2017 and 2019 that I'm gonna show you right now. So for your turbo coolant return line, this is how you wanna route it if you have a 2017 to 2019. If you have a 2020 plus like this one, we're going to take this hose off here and we're going to take this hose off here. And basically we're gonna run a line from here up along the firewall and into the return on your coolant reservoir. The kit didn't come with this, but I went and purchased some quarter inch, this is fuel line. Uh, and that's what I'm gonna be using to reroute the turbo coolant line on this 2020 plus. The 2017 to 19 also have a turbo plug you have to put in. So for 2017 to 19 trucks, plug the now unused port on the turbo line using one of the supplied aluminum hose barb plugs and a short section of the OEM hose, as you can see right there. And on our 2020 plus, we don't have to worry about that. But I'm not even gonna put this hose on yet because we are doing the downpipe, which is optional, but we're doing the downpipe on this truck. So in order to change that downpipe and get this filter out, we have to pull the turbo out. So to remove the turbo, we're gonna remove this heat shield. We're gonna remove this heat shield on the other side, and we're gonna remove this knock sensor, and you can also unplug it from the other end and just remove it out of the truck. Okay, got this heat shield off. Then this is a little bit greasy. Before I unbolted this heat shield, I used a sawzall and I just cut that sensor. So now I can get a 22 millimeter socket, I believe it is, right on it like that. And it'll be way easier to remove it. Okay, there we go. I ended up taking this sensor out too, just so I could fold that heat shield over to this side and pull it out. Now we're gonna remove the V-band clamp that connects the SCR to the turbo. So this guy right here, we're also gonna remove the V-band clamp down there. Uh, that connects it to the downpipe. You don't have to actually remove them, but just get them loose and broken free. And I'm also gonna unbolt these two bolts here and the ones on the back to remove this bracket that holds the downpipe in place. I disconnected the downpipe and it just basically fell down there. There it is. I was able to easily pull it out from the bottom. Okay, this is loose now. This V-band clamp was seized on there. What I did was I just grabbed a hammer and I just tapped it here and the vibration is what kind of loosened this and got it to break free. So now I'm just gonna remove this V-band clamp. This thing's gonna hang out down there and we're gonna pull this turbo out. It's so stupid because this is so close to being able to come out here, but it doesn't fit. If you wanted to, you could probably unbolt the cab bolts and lift the cab a little bit and then pull this out without doing the turbo. But in all honesty, pulling the turbo is actually really easy on these trucks. So pop this pipe off to the left. You can leave this one on, but that one we gotta remove. The oil drain line is right down there. There's two bolts, remove that. Then on the driver's side of the turbo, there's also that guy, remove those. So basically everything connected to the turbo we gotta remove. Keep note of which bolts you remove from the coolant and oil lines because when I did this last time, I put bolts in that were too long and I almost stripped the holes. So just try to put the same bolts back in that you remove. Once everything's disconnected from the turbo, there's just four bolts, one, two, three, four. They're super easy to get at. So remove those bolts and then pull that sucker out of there. Okay, the turbo's out. Now you can grab this stupid SCR Pull that thing out of the truck. Look, every damn time, there's always a freaking mouse nest in the valley of a Duramax engine, like clockwork. And there she is all opened up. So now we're gonna get the downpipe ready to go in place. So this downpipe is an optional item, but I strongly recommend you do it because like you see, then you get rid of the SCR so you get the full delete and you get that good exhaust sound. Put the heat wrap on the downpipe, something like this. Use gloves when you're handling this stuff though because it can get very itchy. So notice how I have the downpipe down here. I just put a nut on right there just to kind of hold it in place so it doesn't fall down. And then uh, we'll bolt it up later when we put the exhaust on. So I put the downpipe in from the top. And like I said, I put a nut on just so it won't fall down. And now we can just leave it in place so we can manipulate it a bit when we put the turbo back in. The kit comes with a new turbo gasket, so replace that. And then it also comes with a few of these in case you need to replace any of those. Now with that gasket replaced, we can put the turbo back in. 
Really cool thing about this oil drain gasket is that it's actually riveted on, so you don't have to worry about lining up when you put the turbo back in. But yeah, you can drop that turbo in, put the oil lines back on, the coolant lines, the intake pipe, and uh, make sure you tighten that turbo down. Okay, we got the turbo back in, and these bolts right here for this one coolant line, those were the ones that were a tad bit longer, so just make sure you put the longer ones in that guy. Now reuse the V-band clamp and put this downpipe onto the turbo. Once the downpipe is on, we are going to connect this uh, coolant line all the way to the coolant reservoir. Like I said, the kit didn't actually come with this. I kind of think they sent me a kit for 2017 to 19. That would make more sense. So I just went and got some quarter inch hose and that's what I'll be using. Then we got the new coolant line on just like that. Be very careful with this plastic nipple. You don't want to snap it off. Okay, remove this out of those ports. We're gonna put that big intake bridge back on. Once that guy's in there, we're gonna install a block off plate right here. There's a block off plate, a gasket, a couple bolts in the kit. There's it on. Get this big wiring harness back in place. Just kind of put the clips back in place. You can plug a few things back in like this guy, this guy. Make sure this uh, coolant temperature sensor is plugged in. This throttle valve though will always stay unplugged. Do not plug that back in. Now you're gonna grab this intake horn and we're gonna bolt that back to the turbo. Now we're gonna put the alternator back in and then we'll put the AC compressor back in. Once you got the AC compressor and the alternator in, put the belt on like I have. Make sure this charge air pipe is connected and this snap ring is locked on. Put this bracket back on top of the AC compressor and then you can clip this uh, connector back in place. Now you wanna go ahead and just make sure everything is plugged in. These guys plug in up here. I believe these three plugs back here, they're gonna stay unplugged. Throttle valve stays unplugged. But yeah, get all these sensors, kind of just get everything back in place. And then we will put the air intake piping back in. Okay, so I think we're all good under the hood. That guy stayed unplugged. Throttle valve stayed unplugged. There's an EGR plug down there. And then one, two, three. So zip tie these all nice and neat and out of the way. And I think that's it for right now. So now we are gonna install the CAN bus plugs. Now it's gonna be a little bit different for 2020 plus like this truck uh, compared to a 2017 to 19. Honestly, I've never put them on a 2017 to 19, but I assume they're very similar. So on 2017 to 19, first plug is on the driver's side of the engine bay, close to the firewall. There's a closer up picture of it. The second plug is, that's the inside of the passenger frame looking towards the front of the vehicle. And then the outside of the passenger frame for the third plug. And then the inside of the passenger side frame again, and this time is towards the rear of the truck in front of the rear axle. But I'll show you where we're gonna put them on this 2020 plus truck. So the first one we're gonna use is one of these smaller ones. There's two of these ones and then a bigger one in the kit. So this guy is actually gonna go right here where that SCR sensor, or where that knock sensor was on the SCR behind the turbo. So unplug that connector, and then that whole uh, metal piece, we can just remove it. But it's just this connector right here, that's where we're gonna plug the, the CAN bus plug into. So I remove this right from the truck. And if you have dielectric grease, it's not a bad idea to put a little bit in here. And there we go, the CAN bus plug is installed. So zip tie that somewhere nice, and we'll move on to the next one. Again, a little bit of dielectric grease in these other two would be a good idea. You don't have to, but it just will help from corrosion in the future. Okay, second one is going to be on the passenger side frame rail. And I already got this plugged in. It's right there. So tie that up out of the way. Then the third and final one is on the driver's side, about halfway down the frame. And it is your DEF harness plug. So we're going to unplug this, and then we're going to plug the CAN bus plug in instead. These can be a pain in the butt, but you pop that tab up and then you push this. And as you push that, you fold this gray lever back while kind of trying to open it up. Just be careful with it. Take your time. Get all the gunk out of it so that it comes apart nice. Now, I had a hell of a time figuring this out last time. I couldn't get the plug to go on, but see this tab right here? See if I can squeeze it in my knee a little bit. I had to push this tab in like that and now it will go on for some reason it comes 
snapped out like that and then this won't allow you to actually plug it in so you have to just grab a little pick and just kind of slide this over let me try there we go and now you'll see it's nice and smooth on both sides it will fit perfectly put some dielectric grease in this one for sure and then yeah put it in there and then you're just gonna clamp it together with this gray uh lever and there you go this cam bus plug is in so again zip tie these up out of the way so I believe everything should be done underneath the hood and we got the CAN bus plugs installed. So now there's those two little coolant lines that go by the death injector that were on the exhaust system. So if you can get little quarter inch plugs like this, the kit doesn't come with them, but again, I let them know and they're gonna try to add these plugs. If not, you could just use a bolt with a hose clamp and we're just gonna plug those lines. Okay, and here are these two lines. See, there's the downpipe. See this one, I just put a bolt in it and hose clamped. And then this one, I used that one plug that I had and I hose clamped it. Now we're gonna put that plug in this def injection line. The kit actually does come with one plug, but I believe this is for the 17 to 19 where you have to plug that line on the turbo. But anyways, this is the plug for that def injector hose. So put the plug in here, and then if you have the little clip, put the clip back in. And if you broke it or if you lost it along the way, you can just get a little zip tie and just run a zip tie through there so that this plug can't pop out. Now we're gonna put the coolant drain plug back in. Once the drain plug is in, we can add coolant. I'm gonna be using new coolant, but if you have your old stuff and it's clean, you could use that too. Just, you wanna make sure it's clean. Make sure you fill this little coolant reservoir up too, just to the line. You can hook up your two negative battery terminals. And keep in mind, you're probably gonna have to drive the truck a bit and then top up the coolant after. But I wanna put some coolant in so we can run the truck and we can drive it back on ramps so it's a little higher off the ground so we can install that new exhaust. Okay, I think we're ready to start this thing. Let's see if she goes. Oh yeah, listen to that sound of no exhaust. <laughs> that sounds awesome. So if you want right now, you can kind of check for leaks, check in the turbo valley. Look underneath the truck. I have, this is all residual coolant from when we did the job. It doesn't look like we have any active leaks. So yeah, I'm gonna throw it on some ramps and then we're gonna tackle this exhaust. So this is pretty straightforward, putting the exhaust on. Make sure you put this piece in the downpipe. So bolt that up. You got this guy, you got some extension pieces, whether you have a long box or a regular box, whatever, axle piece in your tailpipe. I usually kind of leave everything a little loose and I start at the front, work my way back. And then once everything's hanging in place, I start at the front tightening and work my way back. So right here on the transmission, I take this bracket off and then just bolt this uh, line back up because I can never get that exhaust hanger to work. So I just get rid of it. I'm not gonna lie, having this five inch exhaust, it is tough to fit in here. I kind of tightened the two nuts facing the back of the truck to kind of lift the back end of this up. Just so that the second piece would clear this cross member. And I kind of had to angle it, like twist it a little bit so that it clears and doesn't hit anything. And even here, it wants to almost hit the frame. So. Just take your time with this exhaust, basically. It should be pretty much smooth sailing from here on out. I just gotta put the back section in. But yeah, take your time with the front because it's a little bit tricky. All right, exhaust is all on. I was able to get a little bit of space here. It's very tight though. It's definitely a, a tougher exhaust to install. It's all nice and tight up there at the downpipe. There she is all the way back. Came with this extra hanger, so I grabbed an old rubber from the DPF and threw it on. And yeah, it's nice and solid, no uh, no rattles or nothing. But like I said, that's definitely one of the tougher exhausts to install, I find, just because there's like a five inch exhaust. If you're doing delete pipes, it'd be a lot easier. You'd reuse the tail section of the exhaust and you wouldn't have to worry about that big five inch pipe going over the cross members, but it is doable.
don't know about you, but that sounds awesome to me. Thing, check for leaks, check coolant levels, all that stuff. Zip tile the sensors out of the way if you haven't yet. Uh, but that should basically be pretty much everything. I also will say I am starting to get merch. So by the time you see this, there may be a website down there. It's probably coming in the next month or so. This is just a test hoodie I got. I'm not super happy with the quality though. So I'm going to try a couple different hoodies before I put something live on the site because I don't want you guys to buy junk. I'm going to post a separate video reviewing the fuel economy, the power, the power settings, and the sound of this truck. So stay tuned for that video. It's going to be released after this uh, how-to video. And if you guys got questions, shoot me a message on Instagram. That's where I'm the most active. I try to reply to messages at least once every day. But I think that's pretty much it. So I thank you guys for watching. I hope this video helped if this is something you are considering doing. And I really hope to see you on another video. Thanks for watching.